Hi, welcome back for this series, uh, Big Marketing for Small Businesses. I am super, super excited to be moving forward in this video series. I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, every time she comes on, she says she's excited. I am excited because I'm getting feedback from those of you who are following this series closely, um, sharing some results, sharing some insights, and that gets me very excited. And I'm glad that it's doing um, some help or giving you some help and doing great things for your business. So we had talked about wanting to touch on on online marketing. So I'm going to spend our video today doing that very quickly. Uh, if you need to know more about this, if you need to go deeper into the subject, you might want to go to our website, revisionforwomen.net, and check out uh, the products page. You will find online courses, one of them being Big Marketing for Small Businesses, which takes this a little bit deeper. And then you can always join our coaching program, which is a one-on-one -on -one mentoring program where we hold your hand, coach you along, run alongside of you, become your advocate, become your partner in seeing you succeed and get where you want to be and go where you want to go. And so marketing definitely is a big part of that discussion. And we do go into a lot of nuances uh, when it comes to those kinds of programs. So let's just kind of talk a little bit about online stuff. Uh, hopefully you all have an opportunity to uh, check out social media platforms, you have websites, um, you've at least been to websites, obviously you're web savvy if you're taking an online web course, but let's talk about how to really leverage those. It's more than the technicality of just knowing what buttons to click on and um, what fields to complete and what pictures to put up. Um, we really need to take it beyond that. A lot of people are great at putting together a Facebook page, they put up their picture, they you know start adding friends, but then they kind of lose sight of really what the gist of Facebook should be. So let's talk a little bit about that and let's start with your website. Uh, if you have a company that you sell a product or you offer a service for, I cannot strongly encourage you enough to have your own website. Uh, a lot of times I find that small businesses are utilizing um, other kinds of sites like a online Shopify, Etsy, those kinds of things. They're using blogs, uh, blog sites uh, for their business, which all of those are fine and they all serve a purpose. But you're going to be able to have more control, add more features and benefits and be able to really leverage your website for marketing more when the site is yours. So really consider that. There are a lot of a great uh, do-it-yourself website kind of templates out there. Uh, I can recommend some to you if you want to if you want to have some of those recommended to you. Um, but it's really kind of a do-it-yourself, drag and drop, just type in the box type of program and they're really inexpensive. So you might be surprised. Uh, one that I recommend often is only 20 bucks a month and it includes e-commerce, um, contact information gets added on there. Um, the templates are really great. Uh, so it's, and it's really easy to use. So you really should check into that even if you are in direct sales. Uh, and I know in a lot of direct sale companies, you, you are giving a pre-made website and that's fabulous, but you can't do anything with it. So double check and make sure this isn't going to, um, uh, fly in the face of your agreement, okay, of your consultant or distributor agreement. But if they're okay with it, uh, you can do your own site, make sure you're using their logos and make sure you're using the images that they approve of. But you're going to want to have your own place on the web or on the internet with a website. And let me explain why. One of the biggest things that people use a site for is to sell their product. However, nine times out of 10, a first time customer who visits your website isn't making a purchase. They're wanting to get to know you. They're wanting to get to know your company. And so we need to figure out a way to keep them engaged on that site until they decide to be a customer, until they decide to buy. So to give you an example, when people come and visit revisionforwomen.net, uh, they're there to see what we're about. They've heard me talk, they've seen the videos, they've gotten recommendations from their friends, but they wanna go see it for themselves. And so they go onto the site, they're checking out my blog, they're checking out the videos, um, they're looking at the product offerings, they're checking out uh, the other posts that are on there, the other links to the magazine, um, all that kind of great stuff. But as they're clicking through the site, they are constantly engaged in opportunities to act now, and it doesn't require any money. So we talked uh, in the last video about how to offer items of value at no cost to establish an online relationship with your customer. This is how you do it. On your website, you're creating calls to action and invitations for them to join an online program like this, for them to uh, sign up for your newsletter, for them to engage in a product survey or to order a free sample or to um, 
you know, be a part of an event, um, something that gets them to respond and engage without them having to buy the product. That's immediate, immediately call to action right then and there. They can do something and get something of value back. So you can set that up and it can be whatever you want it to be, but make sure it's something good and something powerful. And in um, our online course, Big Marketing Small Business, and in our coaching programs, we really talk a lot about this and picking the right verbiage, picking the right um, offering, because those really do make a big difference. But the main point I want you to get today is to look for those options. And you can do that in a variety of ways on my website. I do that a variety of ways. Um, we have a little section on our homepage that allows people to sign up for a free online course. And then on each page that's in the site, there's something you can sign up for. Our newsletter, um, you can go check out, it directs you to our product page where you can sign up for more freebies. I give a, a free snippet of one of my workbooks away on one of my pages. Uh, and so it just, again, gets them to act and respond and engage immediately. Now, there are some companies that have the little pop-up, uh, sign up now for free newsletter type of pop-up that comes up over the homepage when someone gets onto your site. And if you wanted uh, to utilize one of those great uh, I choose not to do that I have my own personal opinion and belief on that but I know it works and I know it proves to be very valuable for customers or for for companies to engage their customers so check those kinds of things out do a little bit of research online and figure out how you can put a site together that's got those elements on it the other thing that's really powerful on your website is a personal about page. And what I mean by personal, it's not just some corporate mumbo jumbo that is sort of cookie cutter. Have fun. Be yourself. On my about page, I tell a funny childhood story about myself, <laughs> which led me into coaching. Um, use your picture. Use your family's picture. Um, you know, engage them in a personal way as if they were sitting across the table at a coffee shop with you and wanted to know about you. Um, don't worry about it being... Uh, uh, journalistic approved. Don't worry about it being some major thesis. Just be yourself. That's what people are going to invest in or buy into is you and your personality and your um, your uh, connection that you established with them online. The other thing on your website that I cannot encourage you to do enough is a blog. And you might be thinking, okay, first of all, I'm not a writer. Second of all, I have no idea what to write about. And third, I have no time to spend on a blog. Well, let me tell you, most sites come with a blog option where you can put a blog into your website. And a lot of those blog options have scheduling features. So you can write three blog posts and schedule them out whenever you want, whenever you want them to upload to your site or become available on your site. Um, you can schedule that. And so you can find time over the weekend or late at night or early in the morning when you've got a couple of minutes, you can um, construct that blog, blog post and then schedule it. So that kind of negates the time factor. The uh, I'm not a writer and I don't know what to write factor. Um, again, my advice on that is just to be you. And your blog post should center around your industry. So uh, if you are into um, body, healthy body images and, and, and healthy uh, lifestyles and nutrition and fitness, all of your blog posts should be about that. It should be about um, the easy, convenient, healthy lunches, um, 10 ways to turn uh, your favorite pasta dishes into healthy options. I don't know because I'm not in that industry, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, for revision, we do blog posts on business topics, um, on how to succeed in business, tips for being productive, ways to work from home in smart environments, um, apps and tools online that help you build your business and succeed. Um, some of it is my own um, writing that I've written for coaching, and I share a little bit of that on our site. Uh, so that brings me to the next thing. Write for you, share you, give your mind give your insight but in doing that it doesn't always have to be you so if you have a really great um, article or blog or something you find online that's super beneficial and you feel like works for your industry and would help your customers or your followers then you can use that copy paste it into your blog and give credit and a link to the site that you found it on so I love Entrepreneur's um, website. I love their magazine. They always have really great, short, great articles about business development. I frequently share their online um, articles on my blog. I simply give them credit courtesy by Entrepreneur, and I link that blog to their page. So if someone wants to read more about Entrepreneur, they can go to their page and get it. It's just only fair. If you're going to share their information, you got to give them credit. So you can easily do that. 
um, and swapping information. Again, find things that coincide with your mission and your industry, and you'll become an expert in your industry as you're doing those. People will see, oh man, I can go to Revision's website and read all this stuff about business instead of having to go to 27 different websites to find all of it. Um, that's great. That's, that is huge if you can do that for your customers, potential customers, and for your followers. The other thing on blogging is getting into guest posting. And this is something I want to do as I build my customer base and as I build my business and I meet all these incredible business women, I want them to have an opportunity to share uh, what they do and their insight in the industry that they're in. Uh, so guest blogging is awesome. You can blog for someone else. They can blog for you. But what happens is when uh, someone blogs on yours and their guest on your blog, uh, you're linking that blog to social media or they're sharing that blog on their side or they're sharing it on their social media and your sphere of influence immediately absorbs and, and encompasses their sphere of influence. Their customers and followers that are already checking them out online are going to automatically get to check you out online because you're linked together and that online networking is so powerful and it's so beneficial. So um, make sure you make that a priority. Uh, get together some of your good friends or people you respect and know uh, and trust that have great advice to share. Again, if it can be somewhat centered around your industry, fantastic. Um, but I would totally get a piece of paper and start brainstorming people you can guest blog with. Um, and even if it's just 10 quick questions that you have them answer about um, fitness or whatever it is your industry is, have them do that, have them share that. Um, so here's another great example. I have a customer who uh, makes body and um, body products and hair products, okay? Uh, like shampoos and conditioners and all that kind of great stuff. And her stuff is great. So one of the things that she could guest blog about is have someone uh, who is in the hair industry come and onto her blog and share a blog about um, styling techniques or how to keep your hair healthy in this brutal, brutally cold weather we're having up here in Indiana. Um, or they can share uh, ways to keep your hair looking thin and full as you age and you become, um, um, you know, you get older and your hair changes. Uh, all of those insights, okay? She may not be in and of herself a professional in doing that, but she knows someone who is a professional and she can be a guest blogger. In turn, that business owner can be a, a guest blogger on the hairstylist uh, page and sharing uh, products that are healthy for their skin. So more than likely, the same kind of people have those same interests, and so it's beneficial to them all around. So I think that gives you some examples on that. So let me just recap really quickly. On your website, you want something that gives uh, your potential customers a call to action, a way to immediately engage with you online. Uh, sign up for a free newsletter, sign up for a free sample, uh, sign up for a newsletter, on and on and on and on. You can get really creative with that stuff. The next thing you're wanting to do is to uh, tap into the blog and tap into guest blogging, sharing other articles, um, having that blog uh, language there so that people want to come back and read what you have to say. Now, let me just say about the blog, the reason for that. The reason for that is not just to give good information out. Obviously, that is powerful. But the other reason for the blog is to get people to keep coming to your site between orders. So if they are ordering products from you and they're not going to need anything for the next couple of weeks, or if they buy clothes from you, but they don't need to buy clothes every single day, um, having a blog engages them and gets them to come to your site Monday through Friday or a couple times a month or whatever you decide to do from a scheduling standpoint. It engages them on your site, gets them there, uh, and it keeps you at the top of their mind. So when they're looking around thinking, gosh, it's summer and I want some really cute capris, I am not engaged by by TV. I'm not engaged by advertisement on the, on the radio or other web advertisement or engagement. I love this blog and I go to this blog and I read it and I get all this great information and I get to know the business owner and I love, love what she made for me when I needed a skirt. Now I need capris and I'm already there. I'm already thinking about her. We've cultivated a relationship. Guess where that woman is going to buy her capris? From that online retailer. That's exactly where she's going to be. She's already there because she's visiting the blog. So that's the concept behind it. It's keeping them engaged. It's keeping them clicking. It's keeping them coming to your www. That's the point. So with that too, let me just caution you to do your blog posts in a scheduled manner. So take your calendar out and decide. I'm going to blog once a week. 
I'm going to blog once a month. Once a month probably is too, too infrequent. Every day is probably too frequent, but find like once a week at least that you can get on there and post a blog. It won't be too overwhelming to do something once a week um, and at least get something on the blog. So make sure you're just consistent in that. Um, we try to post a Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, business blog. It's usually the same topic. We just stretch it out over three days so that they're quick reads. So make sure your blogs are consistent. Make sure that they're quick reads uh, and make sure that's relevant to your industry. Okay, so the other thing I want to touch on in our last couple of minutes here is social media marketing. So we have a website. We love it. People are going there. Mm, probably going there, right? We have to figure out a way to pave a path from wherever they are online to your online website. More than likely, people are not waking up going, I should go to www.revisionforwomen.net today. Probably not happening. <laughs> but when they are following me on Facebook or they follow me on Twitter or they see my Pinterest page um, and they see things that strike their interest, they click on those links. Guess where it takes them? To my website. So I try to link all of my blogs. I try to link all of my images, um, sales, promotions, uh, news, any of that that can be linked to my social media platform. That's where I'm trying to push it at. Um, do I put other things on my Facebook page? Absolutely. Does Revisions Facebook page have just random pictures and quotes and sayings and inspirational stuff? Absolutely. Because there's a right way and a wrong way to um, create posts for your Facebook page. So uh, just know that whatever you're doing on your website, you need to push and link on your social media platforms. That gives them a reason uh, to click on your Facebook uh, post and go do something. If you are just sharing Huffington Post articles or fitness magazine articles on your site, it's good, it's great, but when you just share those posts, guess where it takes them? To Fitness Magazine's website or to Health Magazine's website. Um, you want them to take it to your website. That's why sharing those articles on your blog is great because you can share it on your blog. Yes, it's theirs. Yes, you're giving them the credit. But when they click on it from your site, it's taking them to your website. So think about that, put some thought into that, um, and know that consistency really is the key when it comes to online marketing. You need to know when you're blogging, how often you're blogging, and keep to that schedule. Uh, if you are doing your Facebook posts, know when the prime times are that your followers are engaging in those posts. So if you have a business Facebook page, it tells you how many people reach uh, by that post. So if you see a post and it says it posted at 8 a.m. in the morning and 700 people saw it, it's not too bad compared to probably your other posts that, po that may post at 2 in the morning and only two people saw it. So get to know um, your metrics. Uh, Facebook has a great metrics analysis on there that tells you uh, what works, what doesn't work, when people are clicking, when they're not, what posts that they seem to respond to and which ones do they not respond to. And let that be your guide. There's really no hard and fast rule about what to post and when, but you you will start to learn what your followers want to see and ultimately that's the best measuring stick that's the best rule to stick by so watch your newsfeed spend um, a good 30 days doing consistent posts three times a day five times a day whatever you decide you want to do and then check those posts and see what's getting the most uh, response, what's getting the most feedback, who's engaging in these, and at what times of the day are they engaging in them. And then start building your social media posting calendar around those times with those posts. That's the best advice I can give you. When we run social media management um, campaigns for people, and we do that as part of our services and revision, that we will run um, Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and all that great stuff for small businesses. So when we do that, that's what we do. We go and we look and say, okay, what are people clicking on this? Uh, what's getting people's attention? What got the most shares? What got the most comments? And we let that be the filter that helps us set that campaign up in a way that's effective. Is every company the same? Absolutely not. Is every company on the same social media platforms? Absolutely not. You have to find what works for you. Sometimes more is just more. So take some time and think, okay, where do, where's my ideal customer going when they go online? Are they going to Facebook? Are they going to Pinterest? Are they going to Home Talk? Are they a Twitter person? Uh, where are they? Where's that demographic typically going when they're on the on the web? And know what that is. Kind of do some research and check that out so that you know where to put your best efforts. Your time is money. So if you are spending a lot of time online doing all these grandiose posts, it should hopefully be getting you some return. So make sure that you're doing it in a way 
that is smart and efficient. So pick the right places to post, the right time to post, and then the right content to post. If you need more information on this, you feel like this is a topic that is uh, very pertinent to you and you need some more help, feel free to reach out to me via email. As always, you can check out our products online because we spend a lot of time coaching a lot of businesses on online marketing and social media management. So you can check those out at revisionforwomen.net. And as always, check out our blog and our online videos because a lot of times we tend to incorporate some of this discussion into those. I also am including in this video a great, or in this email, a great little um, little attachment that is from a great friend of mine called Sandy Krakowski. She does um, wonderful, encouraging stuff online, and she talks a lot about social media management as well. And her little tips for posting uh, things on Facebook is great. So I'm going to share that in this uh, tutorial with you, and hopefully you can gain some insight with that as well. I hope you have a fantastic day. Go out and market your pants off, and let everyone who comes within three three feet of you today know exactly what you do, exactly what you're about, and what makes you different. Happy marketing, and we'll see you next time.